Uh, my name is Aranda Jayakrama, and as you can tell from the program, I'm one of four postdocs working on the character project here at Big Forest. And it's my privilege to uh, introduce Jeff Goodwin to you. Uh, I'm lucky to count Jeff as a mentor, a colleague, and a friend. Um, Jeff is an assistant professor at the University of Pennsylvania, and he'll be talking today about uh, a series of studies related to a key question um, related to character, which is um, how lay conceptions of moral character play a particularly important role in everyday life. Um, I was also want to acknowledge uh, the team members uh, who are working with Dr. Goodwin, uh, Justin Lan, uh, sorry, Jared Piazza and Paul Rosin. So, uh, without further ado, saving the best for first, since it's the first presentation uh, from the Psychology of Character Winners, uh, please welcome Jeff Goodwin. Okay, thanks very much, Aranda, and uh, thanks all for being here. So, my title is Understanding the Perceived Structure and Importance of Moral Character. This is work that I've been doing in collaboration with Jared, who's our postdoc, Paul Rosen, who's a professor of psychology at Penn. Our project has entirely to do with the perception of moral character in other people, so it's a project in person perception. It's got, we're not focused directly on actual behaviour. The grant that we proposed had five main themes or hypotheses, so I'm just going to show you those briefly now. First, Character, the idea that, that character is seen as the most important information we can obtain about another person. The idea that character is a coherent entity that's distinct from personality or ability. And in saying that, w what we're saying is actually entirely consistent with what Christian was saying about character being in some sense a subset of personality. The idea that character divides into two fundamental dimensions, traits that have to do with a person's core goodness on the one hand, and traits on the other hand that have to do with a notion of strength of character. Fourth, that character judgments are based on the weakest link as opposed to the strongest link, as might be true in some other areas of person perception. And then finally, this one's a little more vague, but I think still interesting, the idea that self-presentation about one's own moral character is a more subtle and complicated enterprise than positively self-presenting about some other aspect of one's personhood. So today, I'm going to be focusing primarily on the first and third of these ideas. We've concentrated most of our attention on these in the, in the first year of the grant. We've done a little bit on the rest, and I can talk about that as well, but I, I do want to focus mainly on these first two ideas. So this first one is the idea that character is seen as the most important information we can have about a person. In social psychology, there has been some work done on this topic before us, not surprisingly. During the 1990s in particular, there was a Polish group led by a guy called Bogdan Wojcicki, and they had shown, I think quite convincingly, that moral information that we have about another person is more important for our global impressions of those people than is competence or ability-related information. That work, though, I don't think has had quite as much influence on the field of person perception as it might have. I think it's fair to say that that field at the moment is currently dominated by uh, two-dimensional models of person perception, which I'll talk about in a moment. And one of the things that I think is interesting about those models is that they don't emphasise the role of moral character as much as they, they might. So I'll be mainly talking about this question and then a little bit about this idea here. This idea is actually due to Joel Kupperman, among other people, and I think it's an interesting and quite persuasive idea about the nature of character, the idea that on the one hand there are traits like honesty and compassion and trustworthiness that have to do with goodness, but then other traits that have much more to do with the notion of strength of character, like self-control, courage, and, and so forth. So we were interested in pursuing whether that is true in, in person perception judgments. Okay, so I mentioned these two-dimensional models, and these have a long history in social psychology, going back at least as far as a paper by Rosenberg in 1968. In that particular paper, what he asked people to do was he presented them with 64 different traits, and subjects had to sort them into categories that they thought were likely to be associated in the same person. They did a bunch of complicated analyses, which I'm not going to get into, but the result of those analyses was a conclusion that these traits tend to cluster in two different dimensions. One dimension having to do with intellectual competence and the other dimension having to do with social goodness or social warmth. Although this is a very old paper, it's had a big influence on current models of person perception. There are lots of similar two-dimensional models of person perception that are in vogue in social psychology. And perhaps the most famous one is due to Susan Fisk and her colleagues. And they draw direct inspiration from this Rosenberg paper. So here they are writing in 2007. In the past few years, <coughs> research has clearly established that perceived warmth and competence are the two universal dimensions of human social cognition. 
So in that paper, they actually uh, presented this original graph of Rosenberg's as being very consistent with their theorizing. So we have the 64 traits arrayed along these two different dimensions, good, bad intellectual, good, bad social. And one of the things that I think is really quite interesting about this model is you'll notice that at each of the four different poles, there are some traits that don't seem to have a great deal to do with moral character. Maybe a little bit, but not all that much. So in the good intellectual end, we have being scientific, <coughs> imaginative, intelligent, good social, happy, popular, and sociable. Again, arguably not that relevant to moral character. The negative intellectual end, we have unintelligent, clumsy, and submissive. And then over here, we have humorous, pessimistic, and unpopular. Now, I'm not saying they have nothing to do with moral character, but they don't seem that relevant to moral character. But you'll notice that alongside all of these traits, closely nestled alongside them, are traits that seem to have a lot more to do with moral character. So if we look at the good intellectual end, persistent, determined, and industrious, they seem more like moral character traits. Down here, we have honest, helpful, and sincere. Down here, irresponsible, irresponsible wavering, and frivolous. And then over here, vain and dishonest. So I think one thing that's important to recognize about these models, though they have considerable explanatory power, they don't really seem to make that much of a distinction between traits that are heavily morally loaded and those that are not. And so we thought this is an important oversight because, as you saw in our first hypothesis, we, we are proposing that moral character information is the most important information we can have about a person. So the fact that these two-dimensional models don't seem to emphasize that is we think a problem. So this context sets the stage for a lot of the early studies I'll be talking about. Um, so the plan for today is I want to first talk about a large-scale norming study that we did. The goal of this was simply to assess the extent to which ordinary individuals think of traits as being relevant to character or not. Um, and that is very important for all of the later studies that we ran. So I'll talk about some studies that have to do with trying to show the importance of moral character in person perception. And then if we have time, if Aranda lets me get to this part, I want to just briefly talk about some other studies we've done that look at the structure of moral character, uh, presuming that it's not just an undifferentiated psychological construct. OK, so the broad purpose of this study is simply to assess the extent to which people think traits are relevant to character or not. So as well as their relatedness to a whole range of other psychological constructs of interest. So basically what we did here is we collected together 170 different traits. Uh, I'm not going to talk about how we selected them exactly, but I'm happy to talk about that if you like. We tried to be as broad and inclusive as possible. And we asked our subjects a bunch of different questions about these traits. The, the, the form of this question was, if you had information about this trait, how useful would it be for judging a person's character was the first question. And just a note about how we worded that, we didn't actually re reference the word moral here. We simply said exemplary character. We wanted to try to stay away from loading things up on, on morality. We also asked how useful traits would be for judging how good or bad somebody is as a person, how moral or immoral they are as a person. Turns out that these things were all very closely related to each other, which is pretty much what we expected. We also asked about a notion of strength of will, consistent with this idea that strength of character is an important dimension to be looking at as well. Uh, grittiness, another way of thinking about the notion of strength of character. We also asked how relevant each of these traits would be for forming an impression of somebody's personality, for forming an impression of their overall level of ability or competence, and then also how relevant they would be for judging a person's social warmth, the prime dimension in these two-dimensional models as well as uh, their communality. I'm just going to briefly reference this. This is a, another way that some social psychologists have thought about the notion of warmth. Basically, it refers to the extent to which people strive to be part of a community. So we asked a question about that. And then a final question about agency, which is another currently quite popular social psychological construct. The idea there is the, it's basically got to do with the extent to which a person can influence, con exert control over events and conditions in their lives. So for all of these traits, we have how useful are they for judging these higher level constructs? So this is, um, the, these are some of the categories that we selected the traits from. The procedure was more formal than this, but I just want to give you a sense of where we, what sort of traits are in the study. So we have a bunch of traits, uh, more than this, that have to do with the notion of moral goodness, being kind, honest, etc., and badness. 
traits that have to do with a notion of strength of character or strength of will, being dedicated, courageous, etc., and weakness. Uh, we have traits that we didn't think were that morally relevant, but that are very relevant to judging a person's personality, being happy, easygoing, calm, etc., and their negative sides, as well as a whole bunch of ability and lack of ability traits. Uh, okay, so we have all of these traits. Now, this is uh, a, a very large-scale study. So we had 1,048 adults in this study. Um, I should say as well, this was a study done on MTurk, which is an online interface for collecting subjects. A lot of our studies are done in that way. We also have some studies done with undergraduates in the lab. Uh, we needed so many because the task was pretty onerous. We have 170 traits and 10 questions for each trait. So that's more than we could reasonably ask any one person to do. So we divided things up into 10 separate bins. And so each subject answers all 10 questions for 17 different traits that they receive. OK, so I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty of the data for this particular study, but I do just want to emphasize a couple of things that came out of it. First of all, we have important norming data on all of these different traits for the studies that come. We also found that character is perceived as distinct from personality and ability. There's a strong correlation between the relevance of a trait for judging character and personality, but it's not perfect, and that, I think, is important because it shows that character is a somewhat distinct notion. Goodness and morality were very strongly related to character. The cross-trait correlations were 0.9 and 0.3 for those two constructs. And we also have some initial support that a notion of strength of will seems somewhat relevant to judging a person's character as well. I can certainly talk more about this, but I think I'd, I'd prefer to get on some of the more uh, interesting findings. So what we wanted to turn to then is once we had this data, is to try to assess the extent to which character relatedness of a trait is actually important in person perception. So what we did in this study is assess the extent to which the character relatedness of a trait predicts a variety of interesting and we thought important properties about those traits. So in particular, we thought that the extent to which traits are seen as being character relevant is going to predict a whole bunch of properties that will not be predicted by the extent to which a trait is seen as relevant to social warmth, as well as relevant to communality. So in particular, the idea was character traits would be seen as fundamental to a person's identity, uh, more controllable, more a matter of a person's own responsibility, more changeable, less dependent on social context, more important for living a fulfilling life, more reflective of the way a person treats others, more desired in a friend and a co-worker, less able for a dog to possess, trying to get at a notion of their being <laughs> uniquely human, um, and more fully developed later in life. So basically the method here is to, well, here, here's the method. So we have 80 positively valence traits from study one, and we present a new group of subjects, 20 traits each, and they have to rate each of these traits on the property measures that I just showed you. And then we run statistical regressions to try to predict the scores on the property measures from the extent to which the traits are seen as relevant to character, relevant to warmth, relevant to communality, and these other related constructs. So we're able to look at independent predictive power of each of these constructs. Um, and the prediction is that it's character relatedness that's really going to matter here, as opposed to, say, warmth or communality. It turned out that was uh, largely the, the case. The data was, it was quite clear in this study. Here are some of the, basically, character relatedness predicted all of those traits of interest uh, independently of the other constructs. Here are some cases where character was the only thing that mattered once you controlled for the other constructs of interest. So the moral character traits, but not commu communality or warmth, were seen as being fundamental to a person's identity, expressed independently of social context, more fully developed later in life, and, more u and unique to humans. Warmth and communality added no predicted power over and above moral character here. There are also some constructs where moral character and communality each independently predicted variance in our property measures, but warmth predicted nothing over and above character. And that was true for whether the traits were seen as under a person's control, something they're responsible for, something that they're, is able to be changed, important for living a fulfilling life, and desired in a close friend and co-worker. <coughs> Warmth didn't predict anything over and above character and communality for, for any of these properties. So I think this is one way of showing that the character relatedness of a trait predicts important things when it comes to person perception. Okay, so we, I think we see that quite clearly from, from that particular study. 
So I'm going to turn now to a couple of other studies that we ran looking at the extent to which character relevant information predicts the impressions that we form of other people. Uh, our idea is that character relatedness is going to be a very important predictor of global impressions that people form. Global impressions is a dependent variable that's been used quite extensively in person perception literature. Uh, so our prediction, again, was that the character relatedness of information that we have about another person is going to be strongly predictive of the sort of overall valence impression that we form of that person, and that it will predict more so than does warmth, the central construct of these two-dimensional models. Okay, so what we did in this first study is to have 109 subjects rate a whole range of different social targets uh, on a number of different traits as well as in terms of their global impression of those targets. So someone they admired, a close friend, a parent, President Obama, President Bush, someone they disliked and someone they did not, do not respect. This method, I should note, uh, was borrowed from a study that Bogdan and Wojcicki and his colleagues did in the 1990s. Uh, Okay, so what they did is rate all of these individuals on the following sorts of traits. Traits that we knew from study one, here's where study one comes back for us. Traits that we knew were high, highly relevant to character but not that relevant to social warmth. So being courageous, just, principled and so forth. A bunch of traits that were relevant to warmth but not that relevant to character. Being warm, sociable, happy, agreeable. Traits that were relevant to both constructs. So being kind, humble, forgiving, giving, helpful, etc and then some traits that were relevant just to ability and not to character. And people also registered their global impressions, simply how positive or negative is your overall impression of this person. We didn't want to use the word evaluation because that seems, because morality is more inherently evaluative, so we wanted something more neutral like impression. And what we did is collapse these different, uh, or average across these different traits to form an index for each of those different categories. And the question is, which of these categories is going to be most predictive of people's global impressions? It turns out, uh, again, very clearly that character-relevant information is a very important predictor. Warmth, not so much. So here are regression analyses where we're just predicting global impressions from each of these different trait bins. And so when we have these asterisks, that mean we have, we have a statistically significant prediction controlling for all of the other variables in the regression. For somebody that people admire, it's the character-only traits that predict global impressions once you control for everything else. For friends, it was the character traits and the character and warmth fusion traits, but not <coughs> warmth over and above that. For a parent, it was character and character and warmth. For President Obama, it was character and ability. Same for President Bush. Um, for somebody that people dislike, the prediction, the results are only marginal here, but it is again the character only traits and the ability traits. And then for somebody that people don't respect, it's the character only traits and warmth. This is the only case where warmth independently predicted variance in global impressions over and above character. But the general story, I think, is pretty clear that these character traits are very important for forming global impressions of other people. So this study is a correlational. It's, we need to be cautious about inferring anything about causation. What we wanted to do next then is run some studies where we, causally, we experimentally manipulate information that people have about another person to see what effect that has on global impressions. The first study we did is um, extremely simple in this respect and it's, it involves a somewhat transparent methodol methodology but I still think it tells us something. So people had to register their overall impressions of four different people. And here we explicitly referenced character and warmth. So somebody that has good moral character and is interpersonally warm, somebody that has good moral character and is interpersonally cold, somebody that has bad moral character and is interpersonally warm, and somebody that has neither good character nor interpersonal warmth. We did this in a between within design. The question here is simply which is more important for overall impressions. Um, it turned out both were important. There are main effects of both. This is positivity of global impressions. But the character information was more important. The main effect for character was much stronger than it was for warmth. And this co contrast is of particular interest to us. Somebody who has good character but is cold is rated substantially more positively than somebody who has bad character but is warm. Okay, so that's one way of demonstrating this experimentally. But like I said, this merit method is somewhat transparent in that we're saying, look, good character, how important is that for you? So we also wanted to do this in a, a more subtle, less transparent way at the level of traits. So that's what we did in the next study. And again, we're asking people to form overall impressions. Um, 
of five different target individuals. So one person who's described as having only good character traits, another person who's described as having only high warmth traits, nothing is said about... So th for this person, we don't say that they don't have warmth. We just leave it un unsaid. A third person that has all of these traits together, the warm and character traits, a fourth person that has traits that we knew from study one fused the notions of warmth and character, so being humble, grateful, empathetic, cooperative, and then a final hapless individual that had neither character nor warmth. All of these, I should say, were we also added information that they were not very competent, and the reason for that was we worried that th we would just get ceiling effects if we just described everyone in terms of very uh, positive traits. But again, the question here for us is, uh, which of these sorts of traits are going to be most uh, important in predicting people's global impressions? Um, okay, now, another between-subject <coughs> manipulation was that we asked people to rate their overall impressions as well as how pleased they would be to have this particular person fulfil some different social roles. So some people were judging a person who would be their daughter's hypothetical boyfriend. Another person, uh, other people were judging uh, this person as a work associate and finally as a social acquaintance. Here's data from an independent group of subjects. We just asked them to say, how important is this social relationship, basically? Um, and it was the daughter's boyfriend and work associate were seen as most important. Our prediction was that character stuff is going to matter, particularly when it comes to important social roles, but perhaps not so much for the less important social roles. So we were expecting it would influence these particular judgments. And it turned out that that was the case as well. Um, the effects are not huge, but they are present here. Here are our uh, four, five different individuals. This comparison is of most interest, the person that's described as having the good traits as compared with the person that's described as having the warm traits. Ratings are on a zero to 100 scale. This person is rated more positively as, a, as your daughter's boyfriend than the person who's warm only. Same is also true, interestingly, for a work associate. Having good character seems more important there than social warmth. Not true, though, for the social acquaintance. Here, being warm is more important. That's a less important social role. It also makes sense that warmth may be more important there. But this is another way of showing, I think, the importance of this character information in people's global impressions. OK, so finally in this section, one last study that we ran was a very, very simple study. We simply asked people in a completely open-ended way, Imagine that you have a 30-year-old unmarried daughter who's seeking a husband. Write down what you think are the three most important attributes that this person should have. So this is completely unconstrained. We don't mention anything about character in this question. Um, but as you can see from our top 11 list here, traits that are relevant to moral character occupy eight of those 11 positions. Honesty is at the top. 57 out of our 200 subjects mentioned honesty. Then loyalty, kindness. We have quite a drop down to intelligence. Um, we have other things that are not relevant to character in their sense of, uh, sense of humour. Money is our number 10 item. But as you can see, 8 out of the 11 are relevant to character. So I think this is another way of demonstrating the importance of character in person perception. OK, so just to wrap up this particular section, I think that th this has provided some evidence that the extent to which traits are seen as relevant to moral character is quite an important determinant of person perception processes, including global impression formation, which provides support for the first main hypothesis in the grant, that character information is the most important information we can have about another person. There's some initial evidence in these data as well for a di distinction between goodness and strength traits, but not a great deal yet. Um, but one question we haven't looked at yet in any of this section is, well, what about the structure of character itself? Surely it's not just a, a sort of amorphous, undifferentiated ent entity, there must be some underlying structure to character. And so that's the question I want to just briefly talk about now. Um, in five minutes, I'll just talk about two studies we've done to try to look at, at this particular question. So the question of interest here is, well, psychologically then, what are the foundational dimensions of character in person perception processes? This is a question that social psychologists have also tackled to a certain extent. And there are some models out there that make proposals about what these dimensions actually are. So one that you may be familiar with is Lawrence Walker's Just, Brave and Caring model, which, not surprisingly, proposes just, brave and caring as the foundational dimensions. I'm sure many of you are familiar with Height's Five Foundations model, which is usually talked about as a model of moral judgment, but it is, it is also a model of moral character, because for each of his five foundations, 
there are corresponding virtues. So on his model, caring, just, loyal, respectful, and temperate would be the most important moral virtues. Other models ex emphasize the prime importance of trustworthiness, and there's a couple of variants of those. I think these models are all interesting, and they've, um, they've helped gather some interesting data. But one of the, pr I think, problems with these models, from the point of view of assessing this question at least, is that they're all very heavily theory-driven to start with. They start with a priori speculations about what the different areas of morality should be, and then they go out and find evidence that's consistent with those speculations. But there's a little bit of a worry that the data that they, uh, that they eventually acquire is a little bit constrained by the initial hypothesis and the methods of collecting their data. So we wanted to approach this in a more open-ended, bottom-up way. Let's go and try to see what the important dimensions of moral character might be. So we've made some progress in, on that front, uh, but there's still more to do. Let me just talk about two things we have done. This study is a very simple study. Um, we asked two groups of subjects to rank order 13 different candidate dimensions of moral character. One group of subjects were asked, rank order them in terms of what you think is their importance for judging a person's character. Another group of subjects were simply asked to rank them in terms of how important it would be to know this information about a person. So we, here are our dimensions. We wanted to be quite inclusive. We drew on prior theorizing as well as our own theorizing in coming up with these different dimensions. But again, the aim was to be quite inclusive. So we have a bunch of different dimensions that have to do with goodness, some that have to do with strength of character, and one that has to do with wisdom. And so people just have to array them in rank order of importance. So here's the data for the judging character task. When you see um, gaps, that means there's a significant difference in the rank order. So honesty and sincerity is at the top. Um, and then we have kindness, trustworthiness, justice. And as we move down, we get more of the strength of character traits. I think this bit finding is actually important, because if you think back to the Walker model and the Height model, just brave and caring and Height's Fail Five Foundation model, honesty actually does not play a role in any of those theories. Um, but our subjects are saying it's the most important thing. They also said it was the most important thing for uh, thing that we could know about a person. This is a, a question that doesn't reference moral character at all, but there's quite a degree of concordance between these rankings. Um, it's about 0.8 or 0.93, depending on which non-parametric statistic you use. Two different groups. Two different groups, yeah. Um, OK, so that's one way of looking at this question. The final study, we tried to dig into this a little bit more deeply. Um, this one's a little more complicated, but I'll see if I can explain this clearly. So what we did is uh, get a different group of subjects to rate all 170 traits from our study one. And they had to rate them in terms of their usefulness for judging the 12 candidate dimensions that I just showed you in the last study. So how useful would having information about this trait be for working out whether somebody is honest? or kind, or uh, just. We also asked them the same question that we asked in study one, how useful would having information about this trait be for judging a person's character? And the idea with this study is to use the character uh, variable as our dependent variable, and to try to see which of these different dimensions independently predict variance in usefulness for judging moral character. So which candidate dimensions emerge as uniquely and distinctly predictive of moral character. This is one way to try to answer this question in a bottom-up sort of way. Um, OK, so here is the result from our regression analysis. The bolded items are the ones that independently predicted variance in usefulness for judging moral character. I've just shaded out the less relevant ones. What we see is just and fair, kind and compassionate, honest and sincere, which all seem very conceptually distinct, but we're also very statistically distinct in this particular analysis as well. They all emerged as strong, independent predictors of the character relevance. Self-controlled and disciplined also sort of made it under the wire just, uh, and hardworking and courageous um, were just above the significance mark. So this, is, I think, is some preliminary evidence that these might be important and distinct dimensions of moral character. This is obviously not the final word. This is one particular method you could use to assess this question. And I think it's also worth noting that the, the results that you would get from this might be constrained to a certain extent by the traits that you have in the model in, in the first place. Um, 
Be that as it may, um, I think these results do make some sense and they're distinct from what current proposals in, in the literature. Okay, so um, here's a factor analysis where we're trying to look for global structure across these traits. We do see one factor that seems to load on goodness and another one that seems to load very much on strength. Um, but I'm going to pass by that quickly because my time is up. So um, just to summarise, I think we found some evidence here for the importance of moral character information in person perception judgments. Uh, one last thing we want to do here is an obituary study where we look at the extent to which character information is mentioned in obituaries as opposed to other kinds of information. We think it will be very important in summary judgments of people's lives. And we've made some progress on investigating the structure and coherence of moral character. We have some candidate ideas about uh, how to further that, uh, but that's probably more tentative than this stuff at this point. We've got other lines of ongoing research as well. Um, we've made some progress on each of these things, but I won't say any more because I know I'm out of time. Thanks uh, for your attention and uh, look forward to questions. confusing the warmth with character. They choose the person who's the most extroverted and most sociable, even though that's not what they said they wanted. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm curious what your thoughts are about what people say they want and then what they're, whether they confuse those with character or yeah. uh, if they... Well, yeah, no, I think, I think that's a very relevant empirical issue. Um, we have not done a, ch a choice task like that, but we certainly could. I guess one thing I would say is that some of the methods that we used are more implicit than others. So. Obviously, the task where, you, where we say, look, this person has good character, but low warmth, what do you think, is very heavy-handed and very explicit. But I don't think that's true of this, the first study three, where people simply register their global impression and also rate the person on the traits. Um, there, we're just seeing the importance of character emerging in the predictive relations. But I think that's, that's it's similar to a choice task in the sense that it's, it's sort of reflecting people's spontaneous judgments about what is most important. I think that's also true to a certain extent of the task where we get people to rate people by traits and the daughter's boyfriend, work associate, etc. There they're not it's being explicitly presented with a contrast between character and warmth, but yet it still seems like the character information matters more. So there's obviously other things we could do to, to pursue this in a more implicit way. I think it's a great direction. Um, but I do think some of the data does speak to that issue to a certain extent already. I, I, I had a question about the uh, uh, slide where uh, honest and sincere were, were at the top. Yeah. Um, now, I, I don't know the, the exact questions and whatnot, but um, it seems that w one important thing about on, on, being honest and sincere is it provides an important basis for us to be able to assess someone else. Mm -hmm. So could it be that they were ranked as high as they were because that was taken as mm -hmm. a sort of a foundational quality or something that's necessary mm -hmm. in order to mm -hmm. make sense of people in, right. in a number of other ways? So, so, not, so And I'm not denying that they would be important in and of themselves, but that they they got a boost because they were necessary. Right, right, right. Would be necessary. So it's like a lens. Unless if your lens is foggy, you can't see the rest of the... Something like, yeah, yeah if, if they're a well-meaning but terribly insincere person. Mm. Um, mm. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, it's bright. So my question is, is there some way to control, maybe control mm. for that, or to, or to sort of parse those two things out? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I have, we haven't thought about that, um, but I do see the point that, that there may be something special going on with that particular category. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to think about that, actually. It's a, it's a good point. Um, I'm not sure immediately how you would control for that, but I'm sure we could think of something. Yeah, thanks. So interesting stuff. I have a question about study thought. Uh, so I think this was the thing yeah. you're referring to. So um, maybe I just missed something. So, so were people asked to rank these character traits for just in general? 
So it was not specified in terms of would you like these traits in a coworker or a yeah, daughter's sure. boyfriend? Because you could imagine. I mean, if you're looking for if you're looking for the structure of, of characters, character traits, you yeah. can imagine that you'll get there won't be a structure. You'll get very different structures depending on what social role the person you're evaluating might be. Um, yeah. Just, I, does that seem Okay, so just to, to answer the first question, the, the one question was simply rank all of them in terms of usefulness for judging a person's character. No context. In respect of what person right. Is, yeah. Second one was what, is, what would be most important to know about another person. Again, it's totally decontextualized. Um, would we see different rankings if we asked a question, you're going on a road trip? What a, of, yeah, of course. Um, but I guess what we wanted to do is use something that's as sort of abstract and decontextualized and in some cases ant antiseptic as possible to try to just get a general reading on what people think about this. Now, that's not to say that it's, it's not going to shift in if you ask it in a different context. I'm not sure that I would go so far as to say that the structure of character itself is going to shift depending on context, but I would say that the relative importance of character is going to shift depending on context. But I'm not, I'm not sure that it would be the case that in one context people have one particular set sense of what character is and then it, it's different in another context. I would just think it's more about relative importance of that overall construct. But I, I mean, it could be different than that. I have two questions. Um, one is about your first study and something that I found to be a little bit paradoxical. So in your first study, you found that um, people say that um, character traits are highly relevant to identity, but you also found that they say that they're um, modifiable, that they're changeable. Mm -hmm. And to me, that those things, it was puzzling to me that those things um, went together, and I was wondering if you could say more about that. Yeah, I, I mean, that's interesting. That, that is a, a certain source of tension. I mean, I guess th the way we've been thinking about that goes back a little bit to something that Christian was saying about the fact that people are seen as responsible for their characters. If it is the case that you have more control over that, or people see you as having more control over that than as something else, the choice that you make is strongly reflective of your core essence as, as a person. Whereas if you, you know, happen to have some trait that you can't control, but through luck you have that trait, it, seem, it may be less reflective of, of identity. But I agree, it's, it's an interesting source of tension. And then the second question I have, I was just wondering about um, what you thought about potential cross-cultural variability or similarities, both in terms of traits that people call on as character traits and in terms of the underlying structure. Mm -hmm. Well, I think there's likely to be cross-cultural variability. I mean, this is, this is all done in the USA. I should have said that. Um, I mean, you know, there are sort of uh, obvious predictions you can make about what would be different in collectivistic societies, perhaps. Uh, there'd be less, there'd be more emphasis on communality and traits that relate to social harmony. Um, I think that's likely to be true, but there are probably other more interesting cross-cultural predictions as well. We haven't made any, um, you know, strong hypotheses about that, but certainly interesting. Just to clarify, in study one, the MTEC sample is only from the US? Uh, all, yeah, okay. all, all, in all of the studies. It's, it's, in the US. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so very interesting. I found it quite heartwarming that <laughs> character uh, mattered more in people's impressions than even warmth. I also find that very counterintuitive. Like my intuitive impression of, say, movies is the way you establish the villain in a movie is by making them cold, not by making them immoral. So that, that seems to be counterintuitive. To yeah. have counter to what you're saying. I'm wondering, cool. my intuition's wrong? Am I remembering movies wrong? Yeah, yeah. Can <laughs> <laughs> I just follow up because I had a similar, I, so I just listened to John Marsh tell me that everything is about warmth and it's the chief dimension upon which we, everything hinges. Um, yeah. It's all reduced to one factor. One factor. Yeah, I, I guess my reaction to that is, I think it, I think it, there's actually an interesting sort of semantic asymmetry between warm and cold. I think when we use the term cold, we generally are referring to absence of compassion and kindness and a kind of callous insensitivity to other people's welfare. And that's moral character. Whereas warm, I think, has more to do with you know, smooth social functioning and being charming and, and whatnot. So I think it, in some ways, it, it may be more of a semantic issue than it is a, an issue about dimensionality of these, of these traits. But I, I can't say for sure. But I think that in, in movies, certainly when they portray villains as cold, it's immoral in, in some sense, and, and it, as opposed to just being, um, you know, socially 
un uninvolved. Um, I have a question sort of related, I think, to this question <coughs> of reveal versus, uh, I mean, what you have here is sort of, I think, people's theories about the sorts of traits they want to value in a person, and then there's this sort of divide between the things they do. Um, and there are a lot of ways to ask the question I'm sort of thinking yeah. about, but one of them starts with this. Um, do you ever look at loyalty as, I can't remember if it's a part of your materials, because <coughs> loyalty is an interesting case where uh, it may trump a number of other character things in terms of who people actually want to be around, right? Right. right? Yeah, I want to be around an honest person, except when that person's honesty might implicate me in something I did wrong. Right. Um, and so, right. so I'm just sort of curious, in the sorts of studies where you ask about who you want to affiliate with or who you want your daughter's boyfriend to be, um, yeah. do you see this sort of active role of See, okay, so loyalty is number two. Yeah. Um, does loyalty mean that I want the person to be have generally good character, and that that I want them to favor me over, you know, I want honesty towards me more so than honesty towards the rest of people. Yeah. Right. Um, well, look, I think that's a really interesting issue. Loyalty is in everything that we've done, so we're we're trying to assess its relevance across all of these studies. This in this particular study, daughter's boyfriend, perhaps not surprisingly, it, it emerges to the, the forefront in people's minds. But I think, as you say, loyalty is a really interesting one because when we think about cases when character traits and virtues can conflict with each other, it's very easy to think of cases where loyalty conflicts with honesty uh, and, and other sorts of, of, of traits. So. I think you're probably right that the importance of this one is likely to move around perhaps a little more than some of the other traits. We haven't actually assessed that at all, but I think that intuition is, is spot on. Um, but, you know, it, it's in there, so we're trying to assess its relevance in, in all of these studies is basically all I can say on that point. Yeah, is it, is it problematic, though, for the general idea of character being the most important thing? Because in some ways, loyalty is a... It's, it's sort of this nice blending of warmth and strength, yeah. right? It's, right. It's, I'm warm towards you, and I'm going to uphold right. that no matter right. what. Yeah, no, that's that's interesting. Yeah, I, I can't remember exactly from study one where it loads on strength and warmth, but I, I could go back and look at that. I think you're right. It's probably high on on both. Um, one of the ideas that we've been playing around with, just to mention, because it this reminds me, is um, to explore this difference between strength traits and goodness traits. Is to look at people's perceptions of of people like a, a dedicated Nazi, let's say, or a loyal Nazi, where they have strength but it's being directed towards a, a wrong end. Um, and what we see there is the dedicated and loyal Nazi is judged much worse than just a Nazi, whereas a kind or an honest Nazi is judged better, which I think is sort of getting at this distinction to a certain extent between strength and, and goodness. Um, so that's somewhat relevant, I think, to, to the question about loyalty. I noticed that you know caring and compassion end up quite a bit lower than kindness and kind-heartedness yeah. and trustworthiness is the one that really stood out to me. It ends up quite a bit lower than honesty and truthfulness, which was your top category. Um, if I were given this questionnaire, I'd really have a hard time deciding between honesty and truthfulness and trustworthiness. I mean, it seems to me that they're, um, yeah. they, they overlap very closely. Right. I'm not sure uh, what the conceptual difference is. Um, Right. So, so I wonder, I wonder how uh, how that affects uh, the results of your of, uh, of your study when you when you've got these these groups of virtues that seem to be very closely related conceptually, yep. and yet they might be splitting votes, right? I mean, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Um, so, I mean, this study is reflecting people's spontaneous answers. So we can't sort of control for the fact that they're going to just mention kindness more than caring. Do they mean something different? Pro probably not. Um, the, the point about trustworthiness, I think, is really interesting and in how it relates to honesty. And this is something that we had some wrangles over because I, I guess we have eventually come to the p position in, in terms of how we're operationalizing things that trustworthiness actually involves two slightly distinct components. On the one hand, being honest, but on the other hand, being dependable and um, able to be relied on to keep one's promises. And so that's why in the, the next study, we actually tried to separate out trustworthiness and dependability from honesty and sincerity. Partly we were just guided by what the dictionary says about it, um, but also we thought that those were two slightly different things. One of the troubles, I think, with past research that's looked at trustworthiness is that it just blends those things together, and I think we might actually learn more if we would 
tr try to separate them out. But that general problem of what you count as the same and what you count as different is a tricky one. Um, I'm not sure we have a general solution to that. Yeah, that's it. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks very much.